Welcome back to the second part of upgrading the memory of this classic 3D accelerator card from 3DFX. In part 1, we doubled the texture memory of the MaxiGamer 3D with the help of a custom PCB. That was less than 2 weeks ago, and a lot has happened since then. Hot Hardware published an article about the mod, and I got a lot of positive comments from you guys. Thank you all for your nice words, and I'm really happy that you like the mod. So let's complete this upgrade today and give this Voodoo card the 8MB of memory it deserves. If you haven't seen part 1, I highly recommend watching it first, because I will not go into details how to assemble the PCB or spend much time explaining the TMU mod. The idea behind the PCB, or the memory expansion board, which I will call it from now on, is to be able to install the additional memory chips without soldering them directly to the existing chips on the Voodoo card. While designing the memory expansion board, I wanted to make sure that it can be used on both memory rows of the Voodoo card. Each row consists of four memory chips. The upper row is for the texture mapping unit, or the DMU chip. The lower row is for the frame buffer interface, or the FBI chip. By default, both 3DFX chips on the MaxiGamer 3D have access to 2MB of memory each. We have already doubled the TMU memory from 2MB to 4MB, bringing the total video memory of the card to 6MB. Adding the memory alone is not enough. We also had to solder a wire to pin 130 of the TMU chip and connect the other end of the wire to one of the pins on the memory expansion board. Today we are going to finish the Voodoo memory upgrade by doubling the memory of the FBI chip as well. A larger frame buffer memory should allow this Voodoo card to render 3D scenes in resolutions of 800x600, up from the usual 640x480 resolution. We have to create a second memory expansion board, which is exactly the same as in the previous video. In fact, I will create two new boards, because I would like them to look identical, without the sockets on the top. The memory expansion board works with either the TMU or the FBI chip. The decisive factor is the chomper. To use the memory expansion board with the FBI chip, we will not close the chomper this time. And there is one more difference. We have to solder two wires to the FBI chip and connect them to specific pins on the memory expansion board. So for the FBI mod, it actually matters to which pin you connect the wires coming from the FBI chip. But before we get into the details, a word from my sponsor. Without the help of PCBWay, I would not be able to create this mod. Check out PCBWay's shared project space where you can find interesting projects including this mod. You don't need to bother yourself with technicalities. You can simply order my PCBs from there. For a new project I'm working on, I will require 3D printing services and possibly sheet metal laser cutting. Luckily, PCBWay offers both of those services and extensive information for beginners like myself. If it is similar to the process of creating custom PCBs, then I'm sure you will see new prototypes on my channel very soon. Check out PCBWay.com using the link in the video description and get a 5 US dollar welcome bonus when you sign up as a new customer. So, the FBI chip requires two connections to two pairs of memory chips. Let's have a look at the schematics of the PCB to illustrate how the existing memory chips are connected to the FBI chip. We are looking at the side facing down towards the Voodoo card. Pin 14 of two chips are connected to FBI pin 124. The other two memory chips are connected to FBI pin 125. I used a multimeter to figure out what memory module is connected to which pin of the FBI chip. With this information, we can wire up the memory expansion module. Pin 14 of two memory chips, more precisely the modules that piggyback the existing memory chips connected to FBI pin 124, have to connect to FBI pin 199 and go through resistor R2 on the board. Pin 14 of the other two modules need to connect to pin 180 of the FBI chip and go through resistor R1. The memory expansion board takes care of this for you, but if you're using a different card, you have to check how the existing memory chips are connected. The memory expansion board also has markings on the pins where each FBI pin needs to be connected to. Unfortunately, the text is very small and barely readable. If I ever make a second revision of this board, I will address this issue. One other thing I have not mentioned before is that in addition to the pin header, I also added pads to the board. If you are planning to create a more permanent solution, you can solder the wires directly to those pads. Now let's assemble the second memory expansion board and talk a bit about the problems I faced with this prototype. My first memory expansion board has sockets on both sides. Since at the time of creating my first board I didn't know if it will actually work, I didn't want to solder the memory chips to the PCB. There was also a slight chance that some of the memory chips I was using are faulty. 
With the sockets in place on both sides, I can easily replace any memory chip if I need to. The sockets on the side facing up did not cause any trouble. Nobody would expect anything else because the sockets were designed exactly for that purpose. The sockets on the opposite side however, the side facing down towards the memory chips on the Voodoo card, did cause some problems. Have a look at this socket. When I place a memory chip in it, it fits perfectly into it. But when I turn the chip around, which is the case when trying to clip the memory expansion board on the existing memory chips of the Voodoo card, you can see that the pins stick out. And on top of that, the chip does not go into the socket far enough to make proper contact and to be held in place. When I turn the socket around, the chip falls out. So what causes this problem? There is a support structure which makes sure that the sides do not bend when a chip is pressed into the socket. Unfortunately, it is this structure that prevents the flipped chip from going into the socket deep enough. Here I prepared a socket where I removed the support structure and the connector of pin 14, which you can ignore. But you can see that when I insert a memory chip, the sides of the socket bend quite a bit. That was the reason I started to grind down the support structure first in the hope to make enough room for the memory chip, but at the same time keeping the structural integrity of the tiny plastic connections. Unfortunately, grinding down the plastic was not good enough. Maybe you can see here the tiny gap between the voodoo board and the sockets. This is enough to make the mod fail. It seems like there were still a few memory chips that didn't make good contact with the sockets. In the end, I had to cut the entire support structure. I also removed anything else I could see inside the socket, including this arrow marking. Once all of this was done, the flipped chip looks like this in the socket. No more pins stick out over the edge of the case. When I assembled my first two boards, I didn't think of the support structure and I had to remove it while the sockets were already soldered to the board. It would have been much better to cut the support structure before soldering the sockets to the PCB, because you still have access to the back of the socket. It may actually be easier to remove the remains from there, but you can also remove the leftovers from the front, like I do here. The next step is optional. But to give it the final finishing touch, I removed whatever was left with an engraving pen. You probably can use sanding paper, a knife or the cutting pliers as well. Without those plastic bridges after every two pins, it is also much easier to solder the sockets to the PCB. The second big issue I faced was that the memory chips which are soldered to the Voodoo card are not perfectly spaced. There are small, but measurable differences in the gaps between the memory chips. At first, I tried to solder the socket directly to the board. This turned out to be a really bad idea, because you can easily move the socket from the perfect spot. And of course, when I tried to make things perfect, I ripped out one pad from the board when I tried to adjust a misaligned socket. I had to come up with a better approach. And I remembered the electronic grade silicon that I used to glue the heat spreader back on the K62 Plus, after I unlocked the additional level 2 cache. Gluing the sockets to the PCB not only keeps the sockets in place, it also provides extra support to the sockets when the memory expansion board is pulled off the Voodoo card. The only downside I could see was that I had to completely rely on my measurements. But after I was done, I was really surprised that this actually worked out much better than I expected. The first board I assembled, for the TMU, was fitting really well. If you want me to give it a rating, I would give it a 95 out of 100. The second board on the other hand, the one for the FBI chip, was not so good. I would give this one a score of 80. The sockets weren't fitting properly over the memory chips on the Voodoo card. But with a bit of force, the memory chips and the sockets got used to each other and now are fitting together nicely. It may also help to just keep the board clipped to the memory of the Voodoo card for some time. The sockets seem to still align themselves just that tiny bit but this only works if the sockets are already in an almost perfect orientation. Just in case you got a really bad alignment and you're worried to damage the Voodoo card when you snap the board on the memory, you can use a flat screwdriver and try to adjust the soldered sockets. I'm not going to lie, this will take force and courage. Just be careful and with a bit of trial and error you may end up with better results. So in case the PCB doesn't fit well, don't be afraid to try to salvage it. As you can see, I now have two new memory expansion boards. They no longer have the sockets on the top. I tested the memory chips that are soldered to those boards with my first board. The one that has the sockets soldered on both sides. 
Now let's check if this mod really brings the Maxi Gamer 3D to 8 MB of total memory. The expectation is that we can now select a resolution of up to 800 by 600. The Voodoo may not be powerful enough to render at this resolution, but we will see. Anyway, I am not planning to run a 10 game benchmark now. This video is about the mod. In the next couple of videos I will look into games in more detail, keeping the results of the latest survey in mind. Looks like you guys prefer the Socket 7 platform. I will think of something interesting to kick off those follow up videos. Let's check now if we actually got 8 MB on this Voodoo card and smash the like button if you enjoy the content so far. Everest does indeed report 8 MB of total memory. Looks like the more complicated FBI mod works as well. I also got the 3DFX diagnostic tools. The application Mojo is part of those tools and can report all kinds of details including the memory allocation of each 3DFX chip. Here we can see that the FBI chip has now access to 4 MB, same as the TMU chip. Let's run 3 dmark 99 and see if we get any improvement over the 6 MB version. Looking at the race benchmark we see similar results compared to the 6 MB card which has 4 MB for the texture unit. The minimum frame rate stays at or above 15 frames per second. The extra memory for the frame buffer does not seem to improve the performance. The final result for the race is 17.2 frames per second. Those extra 0.2 frames per second are not noticeable, but measurable and repeatable. The first person benchmark does not receive any performance increase and scores the same as the 6 MB and in fact the 4 MB card. Let me know in the comments if you know why the first person benchmark behaves this way. Let's move on and see if we really can render now in 800 by 600. The race benchmark indeed launches and the colors look more dark and saturated compared to the lower resolution. But we can see that the Voodoo is struggling at this resolution. To my surprise we stayed above 10 frames per second. Unfortunately the card can push the average frame rates much higher. The result for the race drops to 11.2 frames per second at this resolution. At a resolution of 800 by 600 the first person benchmark dropped to 11 frames per second. That is a much larger drop compared to around 16.8 frames per second on any memory configuration at 640 by 480. At a resolution of 640 by 480 Unreal Tournament hovers around 21 frames per second, which is playable in my opinion. With a bit of lower details it should be possible to reach 30 frames per second. If we increase the resolution to 800 by 600 Unreal Tournament actually works without issues, but the frame rate drops to around 15 frames per second. It will be much harder to achieve smooth gameplay in this scenario. Let's try a newer title and fire up Need for Speed Porsche Unleashed and render the game at 800 by 600. Again, no issues with the 8MB Voodoo card. The menu lags a little bit, but once you're in the game things look much better. I actually think that this game is playable at a resolution of 800 by 600. Unfortunately I can't display the current frame rate since we are using the Glide API. If you know a way how to enable a frame counter for Glide let me know in the comments. So there are definitely a lot of things to consider when testing games with different memory configurations. The Voodoo card seems to be working well so far, but I am sure based on reports there are games that won't work with higher memory configurations. I am sure we will come across one or two games that will not like my modified Voodoo card. You guys already gave me quite a few games that I am going to test, probably with 4 different memory configurations. 2 plus 2, 2 plus 4, 4 plus 2 and 4 plus 4. We will discover what options become available with more memory and test in different resolutions. The Voodoo seems to struggle at a resolution of 800 by 600. But is it possible to reach fluid gameplay at around 25 to 30 frames per second if we reduce the graphic details? And with this we reached the end of today's video. In upcoming videos I will look at games in more depth and focus on benchmarking. If you don't want to miss any of those videos then I suggest to subscribe to my channel. Like the video if you enjoyed the content and don't try to run Need for Speed Porsche Unleashed in Direct 3D on a Voodoo 1 card. You will have no road. Thanks for watching and I will see you in one of my other videos.